you know, if they, uh, mm -hmm. he, he would, if he thought they would like something else, he would either weigh in on that before just opening that talk on it. So this would do that, but I would, I would think that that would be an option for us to look yeah. at. Okay. Well, did Dr. Whitaker want to speak? Thank you. <coughs> sort of been approved for some other things through the actual condo association folks, so they know what's going in there. That wasn't an issue. Their issue was two and three a.m. music, that sort of thing. And then we asked for permission to do outside dining, which has been approved by the Tenants Association and the um, Historic Commission. Mm -hmm. So we got back to the dining. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where everything's been left. And I found it a little concerning that Lindsay Chevron would make a comment about Greek nuisance based on the product that they serve. So I, I, that caught me off guard a little. So I'm happy to answer what questions that the board may have, but my intent, according to the landlord, according to the being of existing restaurant, Chris has told me that that had been a contention before at the Duckworth, but it's my understanding the details have been Right. I My think point about the fire hazard issue is I've been in that pissing the bath. That was never a tension. And not all of you know me, but the business that I'm in, I deal with sterility and that sort of thing in my knuckle bones. So I have no intention of having a restaurant getting dirty. <laughs> but I know they told me that getting dirty. <laughs> I've seen the outside of grill. I'm appalled. I've been inside the place and sludge. Yeah. But there again, that's Sure. I think what, I mean, in my opinion, as um, it was approved for a previous restaurant to operate this way, it does seem like there's different equipment that would be utilized as compared to what Pita Pit, would they do microwave the meat, like Subway, would they do? Put it on? Yeah, really. Okay. That's what that grease does. Okay. Yeah, that's so, misleading uh, quest. So you would say that yours would produce less that would be sure, utilized, or? Is right, but it's for three mini ones that go to meals. Okay. Chicken tenders for the kids. There is a, an option. There's an option. That is just one of the sides. Well, I don't, I I'm not going to talk you out of your menu options. Sounds good. No, but no, I, I, it's <laughs> that and that's right. No, I, yeah. Everything else goes to the baked I was just trying to see what the difference would be between the whatever y'all are cooking as compared to what Pita Pit's cooking. Is it an increased menu that would, you know, need additional yeah, duct work or is it similar? It's expanded for a second hood that actually is dedicated just for the pizza for all the upstairs. And mm -hmm. there again, that's been, and I've had to hand it back to Chris because he read what I got from the engineers that I sent back to you, but the engineering side of the architects and so forth have accounted for all the heat and all the Right. So. My question would be, if the Peter Pit was in business today, how would it be operating as it is all? I'm, I'm sorry. If the Peter Pit was in business today, how would it be operating as it is all? Shut them down when they were. William, no, William never shut them down. He made them basically yearly go around and do an inspection and then clean it all up, get it back decent. Uh, with the with the promise that oh, this won't happen again. Come back the next year and basically the same thing. 
So is it, and, and I just don't know enough about what an exhaust does or what this duct work does. Is it something where if there is some type of filter or maintenance issue that it's allowing it to get this bad? So if they agree to do proper maintenance, it won't ever get to this point? Or is it, um, or uh, you know what I mean? Like, is it a capacity issue? Like this is too much for that size duct or we're not keeping it not doing the proper maintenance so it's getting gross? I don't think it's a capacity issue at all. Okay. It's just a lack of maintenance. Okay. The, the current, the former tenant rather just didn't, they just didn't clean it like they should have. Yeah. So is it a, still a fire hazard if it's properly cleaned? If it's properly maintained, it's, it, it's always, there's always a potential for a fire hazard when you're dealing with grease. If it's properly yeah. maintained, that potential is minimized drastically. And if you're an inspector saying it's a fire hazard. Right. I mean, that's my biggest problem. When I've got a health and safety issue, and I'm yeah. always looking among professionals and everything, I've got a guy sitting here saying, you got a fire hazard. I know. And then we have another uh, department head who's telling us that it's a violation of, of the code. Um, but it's also one that the board approved at some period of time. Some period of time. And it's been <laughs> just, I don't remember. It's been, it's been, I, 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 do rem I do remember. I was yeah. I don't remember to it the first time around. Yeah. yeah. I remember it. And, and, you know, my issue is that it was operating for five or six years like that. We didn't do anything about it then. And if we, if we can't figure out a way to, exhaust it, to have the exhaust, then you're limiting what can go in that space. Well, there a is restaurant. a way to, to exhaust it with, uh, you know, something on the outside of the building. I, it, can I make a suggestion that we go back and see what we can do to Certainly. make it safer and then come back? Certainly. Certainly. Yeah, that would be great. I, I think uh, the short answer to, to your suggestion is simply to put the impetus on the tenants to keep this thing clean. Maybe we do more more than a yearly inspection. We may do a quarterly inspection or something like that to, just to make sure that they are, in fact, cleaning it like it needs to be. Is that something y'all would uh, be actually, willing to do? If you don't mind, can David please? Yeah. He, he was the general manager at Social. So okay. he's dealt with this. Okay. The exhaust and cooking and so forth. And, I mean, mm. he's been elbows deep at this. He can tell you more about it. Yeah, so for example, at Solshine, we would have it professionally cleaned top to bottom twice a year. And we're happy to do that on this system quarterly. And in my opinion, from working with these exhaust systems and hood vents and the, and the grease, it will, it will cause much less of a buildup than what you see currently. And it will really negate most of the fire hazard. Um, that that's shown in the pictures and we don't want it to be like that anyways we we all live here our names are going in on this too so we want it to look look nice and we want a fire hazard as little as y'all do well if this is approved i hope it'll be approved conditionally mm -hmm. where if <clears throat> if we find that it it's going back to the way it was or if it's chris or the fire marshal thinks it's not uh, being kept clean enough that we'll just revoke the approval because this is not a, a given. I mean, this isn't something that you're entitled to. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, a variance on our building code. So, Pope, with, with Janice's comments, is can we do it where we have a revocable approval? Mm -hmm. Can you give Chris that authority? You can if you make your approval conditioned on a regular reporting requirement. I think 
guess that's a fair point. Um, I, my, my issue is that, that according to this uh, an email copy that was sent out, they have been, Peter Pitt was supposedly cited several times and had viol multiple violations. And they were never shut down. This was already approved, but they never kept their end of the bargain up. And well, I think they were allowed to continue to do in business. I think the best thing we could do tonight is w let y'all just work with Chris and come back in two weeks and see if we can't come up with, if that, I think I'd let you look at it, Chris, and say, all right, we could do this different or we can do that different or you come back with a recommendation of quarterly inspections. I, I'd like for you just to look at it one more time, make sure it's something that, something that we're missing that you could come up with or, or yeah, and I hear uh, what Rick's saying. Ask the fire department if, if it's the, um, the position of the vent that's the fire hazard, or was it because it was not maintained properly that made it a fire hazard? It's, it's the maintenance. I can, I can answer okay. that now. It, it's strictly the maintenance or lack thereof is what, what prompted William to call it and label it as a fire hazard. Okay. All right, well, but I'm glad I to agree. do. I'm glad to go back. You know, work with Doc to yeah. you know see what we can figure out. Yeah, I think I think <coughs> let's table it till next meeting. Let you go and look at it. That way you can, if there's something additional that you think we ought to, we could do to make it safer, great. If it's not, come back and say I think it's a maintenance issue. I don't want to go back. Go back to the meeting also. Yeah. Uh, Certainly, I'll I'm going to involve William in it. From yeah. the beginning, okay. uh, and just just for just for clarification, this thing has a fire suppression system built into it inside the building so where, the, it, where the duct starts. So if you get a big flame of fire on your in your in your deep fat fryer, is it, it a pool system or is it a halo system where it automatically? No, uh, it's halo and it kicks in automatically. It's, well, you have the option. There's a pool station off to the side, okay. but when the temperature hits certain degrees, it kicks this thing off to smother out the flame. So the fire suppression is already present. It's, it's, it'll be tested. We'll make sure it's operational. The concern with the, with the um, fire hazard is with the grease buildup in the duct and then on the face of the wall and the, the termination point. So perhaps what you'd be coming back with is a maintenance plan, not necessarily a different plan yeah. for the duct, but a, an agreed upon maintenance plan of how we would move forward and a reporting option, whatever. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. 7A, if we can get Jim Pryor to come up front so we can brag on you. <coughs> hey, if you'll come up here, we would appreciate it. We're just going to put you on the spot. All right. <laughs> I didn't think you'd mind. No. Thank you for being here with us. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read this resolution. Whereas Jim Pryor has been a valuable volunteer with the city of Oxford since 2009, establishing himself as a knowledgeable resource and respected among not only his fellow commissioners, but the entire Oxford and Lafayette County community. And whereas Jim Pryor with his dedication, knowledge and abilities has excelled as the chairman of the Historic Properties Commission where he led the commission for 11 years. And whereas Jim Pryor's leadership and vision were an integral part in saving, restoring and opening to the public the city's historic properties as museums. And whereas Jim Pryor has also pursued the enhancement of the city's historic resources in many functions as evidenced by his work with the Oxford Lafayette Heritage Foundation, the Courthouse Square Historic Preservation Commission, and a myriad of other civic roles. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Oxford, Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Oxford, express their sincere appreciation and gratitude to Jim Pryor for his work on behalf of the City of Oxford and the community. We extend to him wishes for continued success in all his endeavors and express our hope for his continued health, happiness, and prosperity. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the City of Oxford and that a copy of same be presented to Jim Pryor on this day, the 6th of October, 2020. 
Jim Pryor has probably given more volunteer hours to the city of Oxford yes. than any other human in this community. There is no doubt in my mind that we would not be where we are today, Jim, without your dedication and wisdom and just commitment to making sure these properties were revived and preserved like they should be and utilized in the best way. I can't thank you enough for all that you've done with these commissions, the long hours you've put in, the headaches you've dealt with, <laughs> the, the list goes on and on, but really we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And you know, Jim has tried to retire numerous times over the years, <laughs> and we've just said, um, just one more year, Jim, will you give us one more year? So I'm so glad that you stuck with us this long, and we appreciate you. Thank you, I appreciate those kind words. I'd like to, to just say that uh, over the past 20 years, I've been back 20 years, um, I've had the support of three mayors, numerous boards of aldermen, uh, city staff. I mentioned Hollis and Kate of late, they've been <laughs> tremendous. Uh, but I also have to mention the hundreds of volunteers that Absolutely. Oxford brings out. It's been a pleasure to work for my hometown, the city of Oxford, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Well, we know where to find you, okay. so be careful. And anyway, I appreciate <laughs> it very much. Thank y'all. Thank you, Jim. Number eight, I will adopt the resolution. Sorry, I do it every time, don't I? Could I have a motion to adopt that resolution? All right, we got all kinds of motions and seconds. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Wonderful. Uh, at eight, we have discussion of current COVID-19 restrictions. I'm going to ask Jimmy Allgood to come up and give us just a brief overview of our numbers. Oh, we didn't get them today, did we? Okay. We did not get numbers today. Um, I did talk to Thomas Dobbs at, uh, towards the end of the day today, and he said, um, and I did not know that we had not gotten our numbers yet when I talked to him, but he said that our numbers are going to be way up tomorrow, over 1,000 for the state tomorrow again, and um, that part of that is due to some of the larger labs have been backed up. So some of this is, is some tests over a longer period of time. They're catching up, but he said, that we should expect to see a large increase in the coming days. Um, so we don't have the um, exact numbers for today. Our numbers have been lower the past week, and he said, well, that was deceptive because this lab was backed up, <laughs> but it's gonna be deceptively high because they're all coming in at the same time. So, you know, it's, it's a balancing act for sure. Our hospital numbers remain about the same. They are up a little bit. Uh, statewide, they are up a little bit. Um, but we will see what the next week brings with um, the statewide mask mandate being removed and numerous communities um, following that order and not putting that back in place. Um, okay, two things that I do wanna ask the board to consider that we have gotten numerous questions about. The first is Avent Park. I, I know the board has decided to keep that playground closed, but we, are, we continue to get a lot of requests for it to be open. Um, we have been paying attention over the past week. People are playing on that playground, even though we have said that it's closed. I think that it's time if the board agrees to put the signage up that says we do not clean this on a regular basis. We have no way, we don't clean it at all, I should say, not on a regular basis. The rain cleans it. Um, but I, I would ask you to consider, that's the only playground that we still have closed, and I believe that it's time for parents to make that decision if they're comfortable with their kids playing on something that is not getting cleaned. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. And I just wanna say that I wouldn't take my family members there to mm -hmm. play. I do take them to other playgrounds where I can wipe stuff down but there are places in that playground that are almost like you're indoors. Mm -hmm. There's little you know, rooms and castles and the kids are on top of each other. And I would hope if people do bring their children there that they would have them wear masks. I think that's important. And, I'm, and I, I agree with you, Janice, completely. We just, we are watching children play there every day. Um, we can't, yeah. we don't have the enforcement ability to be there all the time. And so I believe it's probably more responsible for us to put up the signage 
that makes people aware of the fact that it is not cleaned and there are lots of little crevices and holes and you know areas to crawl into in that playground that um, that are dangerous but that will be um, a parent's decision for their child um, apartment gyms we have gotten this question several times since our last meeting the governor's order addressed gyms in general and what hours they could be open and their capacity um, our our uh, serving Oxford safely order still maintains that apartment gyms are closed and our gyms are still the 10 to 1 ratio so apartment gyms we have not uh, we didn't address and it's not addressed by the governor's order so we've had some apartments calling to ask if they can open those gyms I think it's the same concerns that we're talking about at Avent Park and other places that I don't think that if you don't have um, an employee that's overseeing that gym, then I think that you probably are at risk of not having things sanitized. So that's why we had left it closed, which that's just up to you all. People have just called and asked us to bring that up since we didn't talk about it at our last meeting. I think if we can put a, a, a condition on it that they can open if they can have an employee. Well, employee we have that now. Them. That's what we say now. Okay. I mean, we say they can operate like every other okay. gym, well, which is if you have an employee, you can, but none of these have employees for those sites. So just wanted to bring that up for your consideration. Okay. If there's not a motion to do that, then we will just leave it as it is. All right, um, next on the agenda is a first reading of a proposed ordinance amending chapter 14, section 10, on-premises retailers permit, holder regulated, hours of sale of the code of ordinances of the city of Oxford. Um, this was brought up by two aldermen at the last meeting to consider extending bar hours on Sunday evenings to 11 o'clock. It was initially brought up as um, extending until 11 o'clock during the outdoor dining. Um, but that would have been in violation of our ordinance right now Monday through Saturday when we are talking about extending from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock that's still within our ordinance that allows for a 1 a.m. closure those nights so extending until 11 p.m. on a Sunday night would be in violation of our ordinance it wouldn't be just um, gradually rolling back out so um, you have before you um, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all just take it from here. This was this was brought up by two aldermen, so it, it just that's all it does is change Sundays from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. to 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. I guess I'll start with that. John's the one that brought it up at the last meeting, and then I followed up on it the next day. Thought it was a a good idea for us to consider um, with the restaurants and bars closing at 11 during the week uh, giving them a, two more hours on Sunday I think could be an advantage or three more hours on Sunday and with the increase in popularity of Sunday night football and all the other athletic events it just would generate um, some more income for them and typically their crowds have been more the locals and the adults and the students and so I thought it was a good idea for us to consider um, I know mr. Addy and I talked before the uh, for the meeting the concern of, of policing and so I would definitely want a chief McCutcheon's input on this to how that hour two three hours would impact the the downtown district um, when we um, well first of all I think if we do pass this it's not just going to be while we have outdoor dining. It's, it'll, it'll never go back. The alcohol hours have never been reduced in this city. Every time that we increase them, it stayed that way, and I imagine this would be the same way. And just a couple of things. At this time, when we're looking at trying to keep people out of indoor areas as much as possible, extending bar hours for for two more hours even though some people will be outside there'll still be folks inside it you know it just doesn't make sense when we uh, pass the Sunday sales ordinance in 2014 uh, I was very much in favor of it and and our rationale was that people were here on weekends and they wanted to have brunch before they left mm -hmm. and they wanted to have a drink have a mimosa or whatever with their 
uh, with their brunch, and then we extended it for the evening hours. If somebody wanted to take their kids out for pizza on Sunday evening and dad could have a beer, but it was never intended to be a, a, you know, a late night kind of situation. And I think we need to, and I know if we talk to Jeff, he'll say the same thing he always says, whatever we, whatever ordinance we pass, OPD is going to step up to the plate and enforce it. They're, they're not going to say they can't do it. But I think we need to give OPD a night when they don't have to be worried about when the bars close, having people pouring out and worrying about drunk drivers. I, I'm just really not in favor of this at all. I think it's kind of a step backwards for, for the, the uh, culture of Oxford. That's my two cents. Okay. I don't know where Chief McCutcheon is on this, but I, I mean, we you spoke earlier. You do earlier. microphone rent. Sorry about that. I don't know where Chief McCutcheon is on this, but I know we do not have a downtown group uh, at this time, and our group works Wednesday through Saturday, so that means you will have to hire somebody to cover Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, you, are you going to have to shift around everything? Yeah, that's a good point, Rick. I would like to uh, agree with Jim. I would love to give the uh, tape the ordinance. Right. And so right now, I think it's a bad time to do it. I think it's currently manageable, but what I, my fear is we create something that gets away from us. And uh, as uh, Rick stated we, we don't have coverage and we, we only have a small resource of officers that work downtown and Wednesday through Saturday are our peak hours and our peak days so we wouldn't have coverage Sunday currently <laughs> patrol can handle it but what does two hours do maybe nothing the, this first six months but as it becomes a culture we're going to have to find coverage there and, and I think it does it it then increases when do we bring our DUI officers out do we didn't have to work them differently so it it is something that would make a, a significant impact. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Jeff before he goes back? No, he think he answered my concerns. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So we have three aldermen who are not in favor of this. If there's one more of y'all, we just need to drop this and not spin our wheels doing a second reading. And but that's up to everybody. I, I don't think it has any traction and, and yes we would like to help the restaurant and bar industry to have two more hours but I think it's one of those things where we'd like to do it during this time but once you do it you, you, you can't reverse it back and that's a concern and I think the biggest thing Anna said was you know our police and their night off and we're talking two hours but like Jeff said after after it comes culture, it's a, we're different. We're dealing with a different animal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I'd be a no right now. Okay. So, Pope, since we've had or published it as a first reading, I don't think it makes sense to go forward with a second reading if we have five who are opposed. Do we need to do that as a motion? Uh, I think it's probably cleaner if you did it as a motion. Yeah. I yeah, I don't either. Okay, so if someone, I guess the motion would be that um, that this yeah not not have a second reading and public hearing. Well, I'll make that motion. Second. All right. There's a motion and second. Any other comment? All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed. Aye. Thank you. All right, um, next on our agenda is to authorize an appointment to the Oxford Tourism Board. I would like to recommend Linda Spargo to serve in this role on the Oxford Tourism Board. Um, it will be two months before she can join because of a, another commitment that she has on a board that meets at the same time as Visit Oxford, but she is really excited about doing this and I think she'll be a wonderful addition. Yeah, Linda will be great. I move that we approve her. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Request permission for the mayor to sign a contract for the installation of Centricon termite control system at the Burns Belfry. Kate. So there's some evidence that we have termites at the Belfry in one of the windows. Um, 
Centricon is the same system we have at Cedar Oaks and at um, Lamar House, and it appears we, they've had them several years, appears to be doing the job, and this would be the same um, provider as well. Get them treated. Yeah. <laughs> motion. I was gonna say, is that a motion? All yes. right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Thanks. thank you, Kate. Request permission to advertise for bids for the Conference Center substation addition project. Rob. Good evening. Uh, you may recall we discussed this uh, in last year's budget and then we tabled the project due to the pandemic and it's uh, included also in this year's budget. We've got some voltage issues uh, throughout town and this is one substation we want to start with to try to control the feeder circuits that are going out. We're gonna um, add voltage regulation to the four circuits of the substation, add a, uh, a circuit breaker, a new 161 KV circuit breaker, and um, do that construction and, and buy that material under this project, and it's in the budget. So you have 161? 161. Uh, I'll make that motion. Thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah. Uh, all right, all in favor? 161, uh, 220. Any opposed? All right, thank you, Rob. Jimmy, request permission to accept and authorize the mayor to sign the participation letter for the writing of the District 2 Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Uh, in order for us to be eligible to receive hazard mitigation funds from FEMA and the state, we have to have a hazard mitigation plan. Well, about 15 years ago, the state went to doing it as regional plans instead of individual entity plans. And we're part of Region 2, and it's made up of 10 counties in the northeast portion of the state. The state will come in and uh, help us write the plan and everything, but we have to agree to participate in the writing of the plan. So we need a motion to um, for you give to me sign. For mayor to sign. Yeah, permission to sign. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, request permission to accept and authorize the mayor to sign the representative <coughs> letter designating the city, city representative at the District 2 Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan meetings. Right, and, and, and I'm guessing you're my lucky candidate. I'm the lucky one, but I reserve, <laughs> I reserve the, our, our request to be able to bring the city engineering department to these meetings when necessary. Yep. A lot of our mitigation plans are city engineering driven. Right. And they have the knowledge and, and knowing what we need to look. We only get to do this once every five years. So I need them to be looking forward about what will be affecting us five years from now so we can get it into the plan. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to allow me to sign that letter? So moved. Mm -hmm. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Chief Gardner. Okay. Request permission to accept and authorize the mayor to sign a medical control agreement between the Oxford Fire Department and Central Mississippi EMS. It okay. does, it, it needs uh, it's a place for me to sign also. But um, since we've run medical calls, we need to operate under the guidance of a physician and that's what this uh, document is. It just gives us the uh, you know control plan and protocols to operate. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Been request, request approval for a final plat amendment for case 2656, Amadale subdivision, lot 37, for property located at 103 Sibley Street. Thank you, the Caradines are requesting to amend the eastern lot line of lot 37 uh, to add approximately 0 .069 acres. Uh, they were working with a, <laughs> an architect on some renovations Sliver. to their house. Uh, there's a fenced in area and as it turns out uh, that they thought was part of their yard, as it turns out it actually was not. It belonged <laughs> to Mr. Dick Marchbanks right next door. So uh, Mr. Marchbanks has agreed to, uh, to sell them that sliver. Um, and so the new lot will measure about 0 .437 acres. They have letters of support from the adjacent property owners, the uh, planning Commission recommended approval of this as this staff and all conditions have been satisfied. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. Request approval for final plat amendment, case 2657, Lamar, phase two, lot one, for property located at east of Jenny Avenue and north of Cincinnati Boulevard, being further described as PPIN 39051. 
This subdivision is located within the Lamar TND. Uh, in June of 2018, a site plan was approved for the Lamar Phase 2 for the mansion flats, and the, those were to be located on a single lot. Well, uh, in July of this year, the Mayor and Board of Aldermen approved a modification to the regulating plan, which allowed uh, a change to that area to create uh, single-family uh, homes or single-family lots uh, on that property. And so the applicant's now proposing a plat amendment to create 11 single-family lots. Um, and these lots range in size from about 3,400 square feet to 6,000 square feet. Uh, the previously plat designed uh, all of the lots to be rear loading uh, for parking. The current proposal has them being uh, front loading with garages in front. Uh, we did um, uh, want to note that um, lots 1H through 1K will actually be rear loading from a private alley. Uh, lot 1A will be the only lot with two fronts. It's at the corner of Cincinnati Boulevard and Jenny Avenue, and um, uh, the applicant has indicated that uh, each of these units will have garages that provide for uh, adequate parking for uh, uh, not only for the site as required by code, but also for guests. Uh, there was some discussion about uh, on-street on parking uh, as it pertained to the townhomes, which actually required five parking spaces. Those were going to be located on uh, Jenny Avenue. However, uh, they've now uh, decided to locate those over on the west side of the townhome property, Birdie Terrace Road. Um, and so at the sep September 14th Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission and staff recommended approval with uh, several conditions, and we had a few that actually limited uh, this from being heard tonight, which all of those have been resolved. So we therefore recommend approval of this modification. So moved. All right. All right. All in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? Great. Thank, thank you. you. Mark Levy, consider a request to use tree escrow funds to replant 38 nutall oak trees on the right of way for Oxford Way. All right, in spring of 2019, the city of Oxford planted 46 nutall, 27 shoemart oaks, and eight elm tree on Oxford Way within the city right of way. Since that time, approximately 38 of those trees have died. We're requesting $11,000 from the tree escrow account to be used to replant those trees on city property. Um, the replacement trees will be con uh, container trees instead of field grown ball and burlap trees um, to give them, they were, the first time they were ball and burlap, we're gonna switch to container trees. Um, we'd like to get, we're trying to get these trees planted um, as quickly as possible. Last time we planted them late in the season, um, which is maybe why they weren't as successful. Um, we feel like this is appropriate use of the funds um, as the money that was placed in the tree escrow account was to mitigate trees in, within the Oxford Farms community. And um, the goal of the escrow fund is to plant trees as close as possible as the ones that were removed. The tree escrow account currently has a balance of over $200,000. All right, any questions from the board? And this what this fund's for? Sorry. I said, isn't this what this fund's for? Yeah. 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 Make that motion. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, consider change order number two from AS Fournier Construction for the North Lamar Pocket Park project. Mark? Okay. This second item is a deductive change order for the North Lamar Pocket Park. We're making progress on the park. We have the reflection pond installed, and we're working on the hardscape areas around the pond. It's really looking good. The change order is to slurry the back wall of the planter of the reflection pond to make it consistent with the knee walls that are going inside the park. Um, previously, the planter walls were tile instead of slurry. Um, we are considering long-term maintenance and free stall issues with tile, so that's why they decided to switch to slurry. Additionally, we wanted to upsize the water feature pumps to make sure the pressure was adequate. adequate. The total deduct is $2,500, around $2,500, and we, we have an extended um, they asked for extension of 17 days in order to do this. Um, even with the extension, the, the completion date is set for November 30th. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right, adopt the municipal compliance questionnaire for FY 2019-20. Ashley? Yes, this is our um, annual municipal compliance questionnaire. And sorry, I'm not quite prepared. I was writing 
stuff down from the previous item. That's what happens um, when you take the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is something we have to do per state statute every year. It kind of lists uh, the things that we do during the year, whether or not we've done them. Um, lots of yeses. Lots of yeses, <laughs> yes. We've had a few no's on there over the years. Um, one I am very happy um, to say is has improved over the years is our inventory, the very last one. Uh, number 15, um, we have just now, I think, completed inventory this year. This is our, I believe, our third complete year uh, of inventory. Uh, and you will see some things coming to you in the next meeting or so uh, to do some cleanup. And I've actually gotten uh, Jesse and Caitlin, who have spent the last two weeks doing inventory citywide. Uh, I'm going to get them to write a couple of narratives to kind of talk about it. And it's, it's been a process, and they have worked their tails off. Uh, the last two weeks kind of getting everything together so that's really coming together but this is um, a big job it is <laughs> it really it's is. a very big job job i think um at last count uh based on our numbers we had about four thousand or so assets mm -hmm. wow yeah, yeah it's, they it's a have lot been working hard to get they this really in have. order okay. move we adopt Second. all Thank in favor uh, any opposed all right, request permission to approve a list of unmarked vehicles as required by state statute. Chief? Mayor, those, these are 18 unmarked vehicles that are from the OPD administration, our investigators, and Metro Narcotics. So we just list these every year as a part of the state requirements. Okay. We, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next is request permission to allow Oxford Square North LLC and, organiza and organization director Lloyd Grissinger to host a live music event at Oxford Square North on October 10th, 17th, and 24th. Chief? We, we want to uh, amend that just a bit. So the 10th and the 24th, we, there's already permits approved from Visit Oxford. And so the only date available actually is uh, the 17th. And so it's, it would follow the same format as what we're doing on, on ball game days with music and, and arts in those right. areas. Move sure. we approve the 17th. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? All right, thank you very thank much. You. Braxton, request permission to apply for the CMPDD Workforce Training CARES Grant. Yes, this uh, grant is part of the CARES Act. Um, it will reimburse us for hiring employees that were unemployed prior to us hiring them or either furloughed and there's no match to the city. So no move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Request permission to declare equipment surplus in the Human Resources Department and authorize its disposal. This is an antedated uh, CPU that hasn't been used in over a year. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Braxton. Rihanna? Third reading and vote on a proposed ordinance to amend Chapter 42 of the Code of Ordinances regarding flood damage prevention. Yes, as we have discussed prior to meetings, we have some uh, changes that we've got to make to maintain our compliance. So I would ask that y'all vote um, for these changes. We've discussed this twice so far. Does anybody have any questions before we vote? Mm -hmm. All right, move we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Consider acceptance and award bids for the Bramlett Boulevard sidewalk project known as MDOT LPA project number, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, this is our Bramlett Avenue project we're very excited about. This is, um, we rec I recommend award to Simmons Erosion Control for the base bid and that amount was $267,569.88. As we've discussed, this project was made, is available because we received um, Federal Highway Administration grant funds through MDOT in the amount of $167,100. The city's match portion will be um, just a little over $100,000. We had included several alternative bid items in the project for pedestrian signal improvements that we were um, hopeful we'd get some low prices and be able to, to complete those as well. The bids on those were very high, and so we do not recommend any of the alternate items. However, we are going to pursue completing that work independently through our signal contract. Rob has on contract um, a contractor that can install all of this work just as we would normally. And we've got funds in our normal traffic signal maintenance account that can do this work. So we are going to pursue our, still our pedestrian buttons at these intersections just outside of this contract. Okay. Um, 
The bids did come in 10% higher than the MDOT approved cost estimate. MDOT requires you to provide a cost estimate and we had to supply that early in the contract um, preparation process, obviously before COVID hit. So we are over 10% of that cost estimate that was prepared last year. As a result of that, we, you have to make a finding that it is in the best interest of the city and the federal government to pursue this project. Um, and I will say that given the lack of sidewalk on this route, the use of this route, the proximity to the schools, the park, the library, um, the unlikelihood of us receiving lower bids and the opportunity to share on these costs with the federal government, I think it is in everyone's best interest. So I do recommend award um, of this project to Simmons Erosion Control for the yeah. base bid. I'll make that motion with those findings. Okay. All right, all in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? All right, consider a contract for professional services with A2H for repairs of the roof at the Oxford Conference Center. Yes, I um, would recommend that you enter into a professional uh, service contract for preliminary investigation with A2H. Um, Hayden has uh, a, come to y'all with a need to repair or replace the roof. Right and um, getting ready to hire professional services, we spoke to um, Debbie Cherry. She was actually involved with the original construction of the conference center. She is very knowledgeable of working with our Army National Guard and all of their procedures and policies. Um, and she actually already has some ideas that there may be some repairs we can do that are much less extensive than having to replace the entire roof. Um, so I do recommend right. that we enter into a contract in the first phase. She asked that we do a preliminary investigation phase first um, because until we figure out what has to be done, it's hard for them to provide a fair cost estimate to us for professional services. So there's a not to exceed limit of $10,000. If we enter into a substantial, um, if we have to replace the entire roof, this $10,000 gets rolled into the percentage fee for the overall contract. So we are still going to um, have benefit of these services, just as if we had originally planned to replace the whole roof. Move we approve up to 10,000. And oh, Brianna, yes. is, um, does the National Guard assist financially with this or are we responsible for the whole roof? That is a great question. So there is an agreement in place that discusses maintenance and we are looking at it now to see if there is a cost sharing opportunity. I will say um, Hayden has expressed that it's urgent that we get this replaced and so we don't wanna have any delays. Um, however, the leak is, the, the worst leak is over the National Guard portion. So it may be that they are equally eager to have this replaced and able to assist with that. So we, mm -hmm. we are not eliminating that option at this Great. point. All right, so we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, consider a request for short-term closures of North 6th Street between Jackson and Jefferson during peak hours while school is in session. Rihanna. Yes, I do request permission for us to, um, for Oxford Police Department to be able to do short-term closures um, each day on North 6th at Jefferson and Jackson Avenue during peak pickup and drop off hours. I got a call to do a traffic study out there um, that residents on 6th Street were being blocked by people waiting in line to pick up. So I went and did a traffic study, observed traffic. There are not actually a lot of cars using it, but what happens is they all accumulate and I was parked over 100 feet from the intersection but once they accumulate, you get three or four cars and the way they drive and, and they park, they end up in the middle of the street. And so mm -hmm. there were two separate occasions that I observed traffic completely stop. Um, on one occasion, the resident in the home behind me was blocked and not able. I saw them, they were trying to get to class, um, college students, they were trying to get to class and they were not able to get out of their driveway mm -hmm. because there were cars blocked. So what we would like to do is just for this short period, have um, a little sign placed at Jackson Avenue, a patrol car at Jefferson, and just say that it's closed to through traffic. The residents of 6th Street will be able to come and go um, as usual. It's just that the 20 cars or so that are using that um, street will not be able to. And normally we support multiple points of ingress and egress. That's normally a, a, a big um, driver for engineering, however, this, the way this traffic is flowing right now, it is severely impacting North 6th Street. So yeah. 
um, if there's complaints from the residents or if there are problems, we can, we can stop this and change it. Um, and I, I will note, I do think that overall it'll get better once we're out of the pandemic. I think at that point, the school will be able to change their traffic flow a little bit and utilize all the area they had originally planned. They've got, they've got about twice as much sidewalk out there that was originally shown and planned to be drop off stations for right. children that they're not able to use right now because they're having to, to reallocate resources in the school elsewhere. And so I think once you can get all of those kids, if you're dropping off 25 kids at one time, that traffic is gonna move so much faster. Mm -hmm. But obviously well, we can't do that right there'll now. There'll be more kids going to school when this pandemic is over, you know? We've got a ton of them who are yes. doing virtual right now. That That is yeah. true, um, and, and we're not sure if, um, some of this traffic is also that people aren't putting their children on buses right now. That's true. Um, that is yeah. one thing that, um, mm -hmm. that, that Bart had actually yeah, pointed out makes and sense. wondered about. So we yeah. do recommend short-term closures. Okay, so. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Request permission to advertise for the Notting Hill sidewalk project. Yes, this is a um, small section of sidewalk project that has been in the works for uh, several years. It was budgeted um, last year, but when um, COVID hit, we paused all construction. It, it um, was small enough that we expect it to be able to be completed by quotes. However, we're, not, we're a little bit uncertain right now with construction prices, so we just want to be sure. Um, so I do want to go ahead and get permission to advertise because this has been a project in works now for several years, so. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Consider change order number four for the wastewater treatment plant flow equalization project in the amount of $45,582. Yes, there are several items included in this change order. The bulk of the work is for concrete pavement at the bar screen dumpster. There's a dumpster there where all of the materials are collected and then fall into the dumpster. Environmental Services has to pick that up, but there was not a provision where it is for pavement. And so it's dirt and they're not able to access it right now. Right. So that's a bulk of this uh, change order. There's also a deduct um, item in there. So we do feel like it's important. Um, the change order that you have also included an item for a gravel access drive that was about $78,000. Right. And that is removed from this change order. Looking at the budget okay. and all things, um, we do not recommend that $77,000. Staff will do that internally. Rob's got um, resources and we've got materials on bid, so. Okay, so the total amount then that you're is asking. $45,582. Move we approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Adopt a resolution of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Oxford, Mississippi regarding the sale of city property not needed for municipal purpose and authorize the Mayor to sign the corresponding quit claim deed. Bart. You've got the resolution and quit claim deed in front of you. Yeah. What, uh, what I've noted out instead of reading the whole resolution is it by adopting this resolution, you're saying that you don't need this property for a municipal purpose, that uh, you you, determine you want to sell it this way instead of other ways that are allowed by law, and that you you believe selling it in this manner will promote and foster development and improvement of the city and the civic and economic welfare of the city. Uh, the, the sale price is $7,500, if you remember. That was the average of the two appraisals, plus the cost of the, the fees for having the appraisals done. Uh, if you adopt the resolution and authorize the mayor to sign, we'll get started on it as quick as possible. Move we adopt the resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Consider an outdoor seating revocable license for Bure, Mesquite Chop House, and Oxford Burger Company, and to amend the previously adopted revocable license for Tango's. Uh, I'll start with Tango's. Tango's revocable, li revocable license you previously approved was for Thursday through Saturday. They've yeah. determined that since they were into it and, and the structure that they built and moving the tables is just not feasible to do that. Mm -hmm. So they want to Good change option. theirs to the full week. The other three are all new, which would bring our total to 18. The uh, Mesquite Chop House is still not certain, but I wanted to go ahead and get theirs approved if you were wanted to do it so that they would be, that they're, they're on go if they want to be. Bure's is different. It will be in the alley beside them, which is a walking alley. It's not a driving alley. It's just a little sidewalk path. It won't be in the, it is city property. It won't be in the parking spaces in front. That's great. Okay. Move we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, great. Thank you. 
I would ask the board now to consider an executive session. Move we consider an executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The board will now consider an executive session. Thank you.